Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to another houseplant tour. This is spring 2019. I have previously done a houseplant tour very recently, if you have not seen what I'm talking about. I will link that below in the comments, but I basically did a cinematic version of a houseplant tour. But I know you guys like me chatting about my plants, so I thought I would also do a regular one so that no one felt, you know, disappointed, you know, that I hadn't talked about all the plants that I have and given you updates and all of that kind of stuff. Also, this video may be quite long, so if you see a lot of cuts in the footage, I apologize. I've just had to chop it down because it might have gone on like 50 minutes, um, so I apologize for that. But I'm going to start the tour in the same way that I usually do, and I will move from left to right around the room so you can see basically everything that I got going on. Okay, so starting from over here, I will start very quickly by saying that none of these are my plants. I actually have these plants on loan because I'm filming a very special video, but I will tell you what each of them are. And to be honest, it's probably obvious what the video is I'm doing. But this is, what is this? This is Monstera Epre, how do you say it? Epipremnoides. I can never say that. This is not Monstera adansonii. This is a much, much rarer, much larger form. If I actually put my hand out, how large, please? That's my hand there. Moving on from that, we have directly from NSC Tropicals, we have a Adansonii, what is this? Monstera Adansonii narrow form. This is a little bit different from regular Adansonii, as you may be able to tell, the leaf shape is a little bit more, well, narrow. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Uh, moving on from that, I have, would you believe it? This is also Monstera Adansonii. Again, as you can see there, can you see? Well, it'd be good if the phone focused. There we go. That is from NSC Tropicals as well. This is Monstera Adansonii round form. So this is still Adansonii, but it's different. And moving on from that, I need to say a few words about this because this is actually genuinely a Monstera oblique. Now I put this on my Instagram a few days ago and I got a lot of comments basically saying, you know, are you sure it's genuine and everything else? So I actually spoke to who is, to be quite honest, known as the Monstera Oblique expert. I don't know if he's a world expert, but he certainly seems to be the go-to expert for this kind of thing. His name is Mike Mittermeier, if that is pronounced correctly. I will link his Instagram in the description. I have actually spoke to him privately via DM on Instagram, and he has confirmed this is Monstera Oblique. So please just take that as read. I know it doesn't quite look like an Oblique that you may be thinking of, but I guess just wait for this video because I guess you can see where I'm going with this. But I promise you this is Monstera Oblique. I'm not kidding. I'm terrified of having it in the house. Uh, this was kind of dying off when I got it given to me. I'm doing my best to look after it. Yes, it is in a bottle. Let's not question that. And it also has these uh, runners coming off it. I know a lot of you are probably thinking, what? I will explain those in a dedicated video, so don't worry too much about that. But those are the plants on this table. I have separated them from the area over here where they do actually live because I wanted to just kind of, you know, I wanted to make it known that they're not mine, if you know what I mean, they're on loan. So moving on. Oh, actually, I'll turn these off two seconds and I will, uh, I will amend what I'm about to say so that you guys don't have, you know, any triggered home smart devices at home. Turn off living room. Okay. Right, cool. So I'll mention that as well. And you know, what? I'll mention it before I go into the plants very quickly. So these are my new grow lights. They are custom built. I did not buy them from anywhere. I'm going to do a dedicated video on them. So if you have any questions, honestly, feel free to just write them in the comments of this video and I will do my best to address them in the next video. They are connected to timers right now. They are on from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., I think. And obviously, if you didn't hear, they are linked up to a certain somebody in the house so I can just turn them on and off, which is really nice. We will start our, well, the houseplant tour of my plants with this. This is a philodendron. I call it cardinal beauty. It's not. This is actually a hybrid plant between philodendron black cardinal and philodendron florida beauty. It's a hybrid of two different plants, so you, you're not going to see anything that looks like this. So if you're trying to buy it, I think you may struggle just because it's a hybrid and hybrids, I don't want to say they're more rare, but I think you've really got to do your searching to actually find hybrid plants. I don't think they're that easy to find, but that is him. He's doing pretty chill. He's in one of many pots. Yes, I have a gnat problem right now. I'm working on it. As soon as I figure out the gnat problem, seriously, you will get a video on how I did it, but I'm trying different methods at the minute and I just want to see, you know, 
can I eradicate them once and for all? So please ignore the tape there. I should have removed it, but I haven't. And before I start this shelf, I just want to very quickly show you the wonderful Gus. If you do not know already, Gus is my Maranta plant. He's beautiful. He was my first, uh, I think he was one of my first Manchester plants. He's doing pretty chill, actually. He loves, he absolutely loves turning his leaves under here to try and get the light. It's pretty adorable. Like he was hanging down anyway, but he's just... He's really loving life up there. He seems pretty happy. So moving on, oh my goodness. Well, if you guys remember this video, I cried over this plant. Yes, embarrassing, I know. But this is the Philodendron Vericosum crossed with Philodendron Melanochrysum. I will see if I can show you what I mean by that. So if you don't know what Philodendron Melanochrysum looks like, it's a very long and dark leaf. Conversely, Philodendron Vericosum is, oh my God, it's on my wish list. It has really, really bright red backing. That's all I'll tell you about it because that's all you need to know for this. So what we're looking for here is obviously the dark fronting and the velvetiness. And on the back, you can't really see, but there's just a hint of red, but that is, uh, it's, oh my God, it's stunning. I just, it's one of my favorites. This is the Philodendron Moonlight that I recently got. I'll try it and show you. Actually, I might be able to just take this off. It might just be easier so you can see it in the light. There you go. That's much better, isn't it? Philodendron Moonlight, very, very pretty. Bright green. I would go as far as to say neon green Philodendron. It's very nice. It's chunky. Chunky yet funky. There we go. Really chunky stems there. It's a nice one. It's doing very well under the lights. To be honest, all of the philodendron that I own are doing brilliant under the grow lights. They seem to love it. Moving on, this is the Alocasia Silver Dragon. None of you guys pretty much knew that I had this. I kind of kept this secret just because when I got it, it, it wasn't, you know, doing the absolute best. So I wanted to just let it recover a little bit before I, you know, allowed it to make its debut. Like this was coming through when I got it and that's kind of a little bit screwed, but it will be fine. It's clearly healthy. You know what I mean? New growth will come in. It'll be absolutely fine. Moving on from that, we have a rare Anthurium. I think this is Anthurium doriaki. Not sure, it's a hybrid Anthurium and I still don't know who the parents are. I think one of the parents is Anthurium crystallinum or crystallinum, but again, not really sure. That's doing really fine under the lights uh, as well. Moving on around here, I'm having to shuffle past my plants because there are a lot. This is the wonderful Philodendron Florida Beauty. It is just the best, to be honest. Uh, some lovely variegation up here as well. And if I just go round, I will try and show you the other side because, 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 I'm pretty sure that that, minus a couple of streaks there, that it's hard to tell because it's new leaf and it's super glossy. I think that might not be variegated. I'm not sure yet. I don't know if that there is just variegation or it's the way the leaf has come in. I need to wait a little bit longer, but if it's not variegated, I think I will leave it and, you know, try again with this next leaf. If that's not variegated, then I might cut them both off. I'm not sure. Because if you guys didn't know this, if you have variegated plants, the variegation, well, in some plants is a genetic uh, mutation and you kind of need to preserve it. So if you have, say, like a variegated Monstera and it's getting some green leaves coming through, you might be best chopping them off to preserve the variegation because it can disappear and plants can revert. If you'd like to see a video on that, let me know and I will gladly make one. I was thinking about making one anyway, to be honest. Uh, so do let me know in the comments. Moving on here, we have the wonderful, beautiful Alocasia Cupria. It's just doing just fine. It was upstairs on uh, my plant shelf, which I will show you obviously later on, but I felt like it was just, it was contorting a weird way. Uh, growing towards the window. So I've put it under here to see if I can even it out. But it's got limited time under here, if I'm honest, because it's kind of touching the top. Moving on from that, we have the Philodendron Painted Lady. Very nice one, super pink stems. I love the, like the, I don't know what they are, the sheaths of where the, the new leaves have come through. They just look like little pink swirls. They're really nice. Again, just some little, some little bits of pinkage on here. Really, really pretty, nice. It's variegation, but it's kind of like a speckled, like neon type of variegation. It's really, really nice. Moving on here, this poor, sad little thing is unfortunately, as named, my Philodendron atabapuensi. Now, I don't know what happened. It just, it's like it woke up one day and it hated me. Um, I don't know. It just, it didn't like me. So I've actually moved it out of the medium it was in. And it's actually just in moss mixed with perlite at the minute. 
Now I don't like perlite, so if I'm using perlite, you know that I'm desperate, to be honest with you. So this is the Calathea Velvet Touch, also known as Calathea. I'm gonna have to put the name up again, guys. Sorry, I know you guys gave me homework to kind of remember how to say the name of the plant. I can't remember, I'm so sorry. But it is wonderful. It is known as the Calathea Velvet Touch due to its wonderful velvety leaves. Now you should be able to see that in the light there. That is just the best. And like a lot of Calatheas, it has the wonderful purple undersides there. It's gorgeous. The leaves get super, super big, if you can see my hand there, uh, versus a leaf. Moving on from that, you guys did not know about this one either. This is the Philodendron Ring of Fire. It's wonderful. Look at this, please. Oh my goodness. It's very pretty. It's, I think it's basically the variegated version of the Philodendron Narrow. Um, but it, it really varies, like there's pink speckling on here, this is a new leaf here, that's what it looks like, it's got some pinkage there. It's just, it's the coolest thing ever. Really nice growth pattern. I can't work out if there's two in there, I think there is, but I'm not sure. But even if there was, I, was just, I would just leave them anyway. It, another interesting thing is, this leaf here, though new, is very different to this leaf here. I just kind of find that a little bit odd, that the leaf shapes do seem to differ. So that's pretty interesting. Moving on from that, we have the wonderful Calathea. Well, no, it's not a Calathea. We should stop saying that. We should all be calling it what it is. And that is the Stromanthi Sanguini Trio Star. This is just the most wonderful thing, guys. Everybody probably still knows, hopefully, that this is my pride and joy. No, it's had like no press at the moment, but it is my pride and joy. If you can see this here, I'm so happy about this. That there is a baby plant so i can actually remove that plant right there and make a new one from it so that's super exciting but the variegation on that is just the best and if you guys have never seen this plant before you're gonna love it when i do this look at that it's pink girl like this is pink if you like white and pink but you don't mind a bit of work this is the plant for you although i do actually find that plant quite easy but i think i'm probably the only one i don't know i may sell or give away that bottom trio star. And obviously I'm never getting rid of her because she is just, I don't know if her size actually translates on camera or the velvet touch, but she's, she's big. She's not screwing around. So moving on to my second set of shelves. I will start from the top. This is the wonderful Monstera Thai Constellation. It is just the best. I did an unboxing video of this uh, on YouTube quite a while ago. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me for updates on this, but honestly, I haven't had any updates. <laughs> like there has not been a new leaf. There was this leaf that came out, but I put that on Instagram anyway, so you guys you know, would potentially know about that. A uh, little bit of leaf burn here. That was literally from the week that I got her. So, you know, there's nothing gone wrong since then, but this leaf is just the best. Look at that. Tell me that's not the coolest thing you've ever seen. Moving on from that, we have the Monstera Peru Variegata. This was apparently supposed to be a Monstera Carstenianum, I think. But I think the general consensus is now it's Monstera Peru. I can just show you this, it's wonderful. Sorry if there's a gnat there, I do apologize. It's, uh, it's pretty wonderful, I'm not gonna lie. As I say, you can't usually find the variegated ones, but you should have no problem finding a green one, hopefully. Uh, don't quote me on that, but <laughs> that's the feeling I get at the moment anyway. Moving on from that, this is just regular form Monstera Adansonii cuttings that I have. Again, you will see this in the video with the others and you've probably already worked out what video I'm doing. It's only a baby, but I'm okay with it. That's fine. I, small plants are better for me right now because I have so many. Moving on is the plant that everyone seems to just be in love with right now. I feel like this plant is like, I don't wanna say high fashion, but high fashion, in fashion. God, it's not couture, but, um. This one's doing pretty well. This is the newest leaf, it does have some pink on it. The next leaf will come from here and there is not one yet. Hopefully there will be soon and I will give you updates. Again, people ask for updates on this. Uh, there isn't, there's just a new leaf and there is a picture on Instagram of said new leaf. So um, I haven't updated you guys because there is no update really. It's, it's alive. It is in the same state as what it was when I got it. So I guess that's a positive, <laughs> but it's not really, you know, it's not news, you know what I'm saying? Moving on here, we have another one of my favorites. This is Philodendron Subhastatum. This is different to Philodendron Hastatum, if you didn't already know. The difference between Hastatum and Subhastatum, 
Philodendron Hastatum is very silver, almost bluey in appearance, and it does not have this absolute amazingness on the bottom of the leaves or on the, is it sub-axial surface of the leaves? You know, look at me using big words. But this is very, very pretty. I, I did want a Hastartum, but I think I actually prefer this. Moving on from that, we have the wonderful, amazing, adorable, intricate Monstera Dubaia. Now this is very interesting. Yes, it is a Monstera. It's also known as a shingle plant, just due to the way it grows. And it is very, very interesting. This should be potted up and uh, mounted onto like a, a moss pole or some people mount it onto a plank of wood just due to the nature of how flat it likes to grow. I haven't done that yet. I haven't found one, but until then, I've just kind of got it in its original packaging, that sphagnum moss in there. And I've just left it here, but I'm gonna turn it over and show you the back of it because it's cool as hell. Those little aerial roots there that just basically cling onto a surface. Now, very briefly, I will mention the, I don't know how you say the name of the plant. Is it Raphidophora? Something like that. I'll put the name on the screen of the other plant I'm referring to right now, but a lot of people confuse Monstera Dubaia and that plant. The other version of this is sold on eBay a lot as this plant. Uh, very quickly, FYI, if you're struggling with that, the best way to tell which one is which is Monstera Dubaia when it grows from the root the leaves will point downwards towards the root. The other one, the imposter monstera, if you will, the leaves will point upwards. So if you're confused about whether it's a Dubaia or, you know, insert plant name of the other one, that's how you can tell. So I just wanted to mention that super, super quickly. I really hope I'm not waffling in this video. I'm going to try and do this the best I can and be as quick as I can. Right. Moving on, we have the Peperomia Rosso. This is, well, there's not much to say about it. It's small, it's cute. It is my only peperomia. Uh, it hasn't made me want to get another one. I'm, I'm just gonna be honest, it's it's just a peperomia. It doesn't, doesn't necessarily excite me, but it is adorable. So obviously I have a lot of love for it. However, however, have you seen this? This is the Alocasia stingray. I know this is reasonably sought after at the minute, I think. It's absolutely amazing. And it is known as the Zebrina because of these stems. And if you look there, there is a new leaf coming through, which is obviously the most exciting thing in the world. And checking that it's moist, but I watered that a few days ago and it's it should be wetter, but the new leaf kind of justifies the, the higher water consumption. But that's really awesome. It needs moved. It's obviously reached its peak here. It needs to have a new home. So I will move that at some point. Moving on here, I'm gonna speed up a little bit just because I feel like I'm keeping you guys too long already. This is the Monstera Thai Constellation. It is a baby one of the other plant further up. This here is very interesting. This is a Colocasia pink china. It's it's growing pretty fast. It likes these lights quite a bit. So this one is not gonna stay small for long. I don't know what I'm gonna do when it gets big, but that's, that's another matter. Now this here and this here, these are the same plant. This is the Philodendron Florida Ghost. It is probably one of my favorite plants right now. I'll very quickly explain why it's cool. So when new leaves come in, I think this plant might be better to actually show you the, the levels of leaves. When the new leaves come in, they actually come in this color. They do come in pretty much white. This one is slightly older now, only slightly, and it's going into more of a cream color. So when a new leaf forms, it will stay white and then it will move on to, you know, kind of white, kind of forming into a minty green. The leaf will kind of transition, kind of like this. It's really bizarre. And then another state, it'll get to, which is even more, you know, more green. We'll just call it more green. And it will transition eventually into all green. So that's why if I zoom out on these plants, you can see, as you probably see on this one as well, different colors and different levels of, well, ghost. There's one there. There's another one there. There's some green. There's another one there. There's another one there. And they are just, sorry, that's my lav mic plugged in. Um, they're just the coolest plants. They really are. I love them. Honestly, some of my favorites. Oh, I will quickly go down to the bottom of the shelf and just show you what's going on in here, but there's nothing overly exciting. This is a bit of a rehab shelf as well. This here is a little bit of a sad looking philodendron tenue, I believe it's called. Very long leafed, very interesting. Again, it's not the happiest right now. I don't think it like transit very much. So just kind of waiting on that one. 
This one I will pull out of the shelf because it's easier to show you. This is the Philodendron Burley Marks Variegata, so it's a variegated Burley Marks. The variegation on this one is kind of, it suffered a little bit from just transit when I got it, but it's, it's kind of amazing, I'm not gonna lie. Now, a lot of this growth is actually super, super white, and that's actually a problem. I'm gonna leave it for now, but normally with a plant, you worry that you're gonna lose the variegation. Honestly, I'm having the opposite problem with this. I'm actually worried that there's not gonna be enough, so I need to keep an eye on this. But that is chilling there. That's where that lives at the moment. Moving on, because I'm next to it. This is wonderful. I don't know if I'll get a good shot, because it makes it, I guess the lights just make the plant look very ill. I mean, it's not doing amazing, but it's not ill. This is the Philodendron Mummy. I do believe that's how you say it. It's wonderful. It was on my wish list. I now have it. I hope it survives and it doesn't die. I'll see if I can pull this leaf up as well. It's just wonderful. It reminds me a little bit of a satin pothos, the way the variegation is. But that's a very pretty aroid as well. Uh, we've done that ghost, which means down here, we have the wonderful Anthurium Waraquini. Wara? No. It's the Queen Anthurium. I unboxed this a while ago and it has a keen eye among you may notice it's lost two leaves. I don't know what happened. It just, I think it just had a freak out and it wasn't happy. I did have it under the grow lights, but I did move it because I was concerned that that was the thing that was, you know, killing it. So that's kind of where we're at with that. But it's all right. I think, you know, it's, this looks pretty healthy to me. The bottom of the leaf isn't doing amazing, but it, it could just be transit shock. I'll, uh, I'll keep you updated on that, but who knows, to be honest. And this I'm going to move back for because it's amazing. This is my Monstera Pinati Partita. Yes, that is its name. It is the coolest dude you have ever seen. Check this out. Now, this might freak a lot of people out. I'm not going to lie. It kind of freaks me out a little bit, or at least it used to when I first got it, because it kind of looks like the underside of a crab. And I understand it's not for everyone, but I like to think of it as more of a winged creature. But, you know, I understand it's not for everyone. But it is a Monstera, and it is a Monstera you may not have seen before, so it is very nice. Got these wonderful... I'll show you this leaf because it's just... I mean, I don't know if you can see the size of that, but it's absolutely humongous. It's one of my favourites, I'm not going to lie to you, it's just amazing. And the growth pattern, I mean, that's clearly a Marmite plant, like you either love that or hate that, but I kind of, I kind of love it, I'm not going to lie. It is a little bit much for some people, but I just think that's the best. So this beautiful plant here is the Strelitzia reginae. So it's basically a bird of paradise, but there are more than one type of bird of paradise, and I don't know if many people know that. This is not the usual type that you see, I don't think. I don't necessarily think it's more rare, it's just a different type. The leaves here differ quite a lot. I think these specimens generally stay a bit smaller. That said, if I do move back, it's pretty large, you know. It's not screwing around, but the leaves are just different. Um, they're a bit more like oars on a boat. This Better Paradise does get the most beautiful orange flowers that you think of when you think of a Better Paradise, so that's extremely exciting. Love that. Can't wait for that to happen. It was in flower when I got it, so it's not a case of me having to wait for it to flower. It's more a case of if I can give it enough light, keep it pot bound, give it the right conditions, I might get a flower out of it. And that is just the most exciting thing. So moving on from that, we have the Philodendron. What is this? Philodendron biliti crossed with Philodendron atabapoense. I've done a video on this, but this is slightly different from this plant here. This plant here is Philodendron biliti. On first glance, you may not see the difference, if I just show you that there. And then I move over here. You should see a difference, to be honest. The main differences here are the biliti has really bright orange stems. It has all green undersides, and I think it's just a bit more vibrant looking. And I wouldn't say usually it has ripples down the side of it. Now, conversely, we have the philodendron, uh, the, well, the hybrid, that is a hybrid of biliti and another plant. This one has definitely ripply sides. You may or may not be able to tell, but that has a kind of burgundy, like a burgundy cast to the underside of it. And the stems are definitely not really that orange. So those are the main differences there between those two plants. Very, very, very hardy plants. I can recommend them if you just want a, an interesting plant that you're not gonna kill. Honestly, either one of these are just amazing. Moving on here, we have the Drynaria quercifolia pinto, which I think is basically a variegated basket fern, but the variegation on this is super awesome. It's kind of jewel-like. 
It's so bizarre. It's like shards of variegation, and I find that really interesting. It's not the happiest in the world right now, but I think it's it's healing fine. Uh, there is a new little... I don't know if you call it a frond when it's a fern. Not sure, but it's got a new, you know, stem leaf frond growing in. So I'm pretty confident that it's going to be fine. It's didn't. It's been fine since it's come into the house, so I'm not I'm not worried about it. But look at that. Oh, moving on from that, we have the wonderful, amazing Anthurium clarinervium. This is obviously just the most prettiest thing ever. I would say it feels like um, velvet, and you may think that if I show you the leaf in the light. Honestly, it's closer to suede. If you own one of these, you will probably agree with me. Also, here are the blooms up top. There's another bloom. How cool is that, please? That is amazing. Love it. It's sat there, kind of, kind of pride of place. It doesn't fit in its pot, but, you know, that's just what happens, isn't it? When you just get plants too quickly and you don't have pots. So this is my Calathea orbifolia. I have had to chop it. There was a leaf right up front here that I actually tore off the other day, which is a little bit annoying because it was a brand new leaf. But I've chopped that down. It's fine, honestly. There's some browning here, but... I promise you it was off the draft from this door in winter because the draft was just killer. So I'm not worried about the state of this plant right now. It has the odd browning, but whenever I've had it previously, it's been absolutely fine. So I'm not worried about her. She should be okay with time. Might prune her back a little bit more for spring, but we'll see. And that, that is the plants in my living room. Okay, moving on to the bedroom where I sleep and I get ready and I actually film as well. You may recognize this table right here. This is where I film. Um, I'm going to start, you know, what? I always go left to right. I'm going to go right to left. Why not mix it up? This is my asparagus fern. Apparently not an actual fern. I didn't know that at the time. It's not doing as amazing. I'm going to be honest. It has grown, which is the weird thing. It's definitely got bigger, but it just... I don't know, there's a lot of browning at the centre of it and it, I'm going to be honest, it got neglected a little bit over Christmas because I'm so busy and it's been kind of neglected since. I'm kind of keeping an eye on it a little bit more now. So I don't think I should be worried, but it could be better. Um, it's not the best looking fern I've got at the minute. Well, no, it's not fern, Kaylee, it's not fern. Moving on, this is one of my favourites and I hope you can see why. This is known as a crocodilus fern or a crocodile fern. It's pretty amazing. If you don't know why it's called a crocodile fern, it's because the leaves here look like crocodile scales. And honestly, this isn't a difficult plant to get a hold of. You should have no issue with it. In addition to that, apart from these two ends here, which actually got snapped off in transit, I find this fern really easy to care for. Now, I don't know if that's just because I have high humidity, because I do. Pretty much everywhere in my house is between, you know, it never drops below 50% humidity. So I'm pretty good for most plants, to be honest. I haven't had any issues with it going crispy or anything like that, so I can actually recommend that one. If you want a fern, it just is a bit different and you like, maybe you like a lot of texture and it's, you know, you want a fern that's a bit more easy care, try this one out. It might work for you. Moving on to the wonderful, the amazing Alocasia, what is it, Caladora. Uh, this is otherwise known as Big Al. This is my beautiful giant Alocasia that I keep in the bedroom. Yes, the pot is way too small for the stand, I know, but you know what? He's only going to get bigger. I'm not worried about that. But he's lovely. I'm pretty sure this is winter growth that's coming in the center, so it is a bit smaller than the other growth here. That leaf on the left should be the next leaf to go, I imagine. I mean, that is ancient. That's been there since I got him. So interested to see what happens with him. He's probably going to get very large this year when I repot him. And I have two snake plants here, but I'm actually just going to go over here because it's easier because you don't need to see both. Um, this is Sansevieria trifasciata laurentii, I think. So it's basically just a variegated snake plant. Uh, they're pretty easy to get a hold of, to be honest. They're pretty nice. Got some growth. Oh, I've got, you know, what? I've got a lot of new growth there. That's pretty nice. I mean, it's a pretty light bedroom, so it doesn't surprise me too much. But it's really, really pretty plant. It's nice because it's next to electronics and it, you know, it doesn't need a lot of water, so I don't need to worry there. It's just a nice little bit of peace of mind uh, when you have plants that don't need much water next to your electronics. And last in the bedroom, we have the Stromanthi Sanguini Magic Star. This is not, and I repeat, not a Stromanthi Sanguini Trio Star. I know I say this all the time, I'm sorry for going on about it, but they are different plants. I do have video on the difference between this and a trio star, how to tell the difference, you know, all the rest. 
I'll link that below. But it does have some very pretty variegation. It still has the beautiful undersides and all the rest. It's a very nice plant. There's a new leaf coming in there. It's nice. It's huge. I don't know if you can tell how big it is, but it's taken up my entire <laughs> chest of drawers pretty much. So that just sits by itself and chills. It's a nice one, that one. Into the last room in the house, there is another humidifier. I don't know if you noticed in the last bedroom, I don't know if it would have come across, but I have another humidifier in there as well. I just bought three of the same humidifier because I trust them. Uh, I have a video on those if you're interested as well. I did a full review on it. But moving on, this is the, what is this? This is a silver and pothos. This is not a satin pothos. It is slightly different. Um, if you Google satin pothos and then Google silver and pothos, you should be able to see that this is different. This has a lot more silver, typically. I prefer this to the regular satin pothos just because there's more silver. No other reason than that. So this is my philodendron Brazil. It's not looking the best. This was supposed to be repotted a long time ago and it's just, it's very leggy and spindly. Really, it needs a trim. It's just, it's not fun, is it? So I might just trim all that back. I haven't decided what to do. It has been repotted and it's, you know, it's happy, but I should probably get rid of that leggy growth. It doesn't look as good as this beautiful beast over here. Now, oh God, I'm gonna have to turn this off. Jesus Christ. Thank you. So this is my philodendron scandens, also known as a heartleaf philodendron for the simple reason that obviously it is a beautiful trail of hearts and I am starting to get a beautiful trail of hearts. Finally, finally it's happened. So I'm very happy about that. This one is lovely. I think I actually prefer it to the Brazil, although I'm a little bit biased at the moment just because the Brazil isn't just not looking sexy and this one really is. So my bias kind of stops there. Um, next to that, we have the Sansevieria Trifasciata Black Coral. I don't know why they call it a black coral, okay? There's obviously black, you know, on the leaves. But seriously, like, if I if I zoom out and I show you, you know, the Scandons next to it, it's not that dark. It's kind of the same. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't really understand why it's called a black coral. Obviously, yes, there's, there's black bits in it, but it, it, overall it doesn't look black. Now... Over here, I'll briefly explain this section. This is a shelf I bought from Ikea. It's not the nicest looking shelf. It's pretty miserable looking, but I had to get something that would actually stand here and you could sort of like walk around it. Uh, so that's just a shelf that I'm basically going to put loads of plants on it. Uh, probably cuttings, you know, things like that. That is the temperature and humidity in here. I will start by going to the bottom because there's basically nothing in here right now, which is great because it means there is space for more plants. But this is just the most stunning thing ever. This is a Calla Lily Hercules. And if I can just show you the amazingness that is these leaves. It's got a new leaf coming in again. It's growing like wildfire. I'm really happy about it. When it grows a little bit more, I might put it next door in the other bedroom so I can see it more because I don't really get to see them. Uh, I don't get to see anything in this room, to be honest. Absolutely beautiful. Moving on from that, we have a Cyathea cooperi. I think that's how you say it. Basically a tree fern. These things grow to be, well, kind of trees, to be honest, clues in the name. But I kind of like it because it's basically just like a very, it looks on site, it looks like a very typical like woodland fern. And I kind of like that aspect to it, to be honest. It's very, very pretty though. Have a look at this. It's just the best. I think that needs a water as well, but that is the most beautiful thing ever. Obviously it doesn't look like much now, but it will do when it grows a little bit more. Moving on up here, the last plant I have to show you guys, and that is the wonderful Alocasia stingray. If it wasn't immediately obvious, the name comes from the leaves and the leaves look, of course, like stingrays. And it's just amazing. This is the oldest leaf. I know it doesn't look very healthy. It's been clinging on there for months. And I think it's actually just ready to drop off because we have some new ones. It's not a feeding issue, as I say, because all the other leaves are absolutely fine. Um, so I do think it's just because it's an old leaf, there's a new new leaf just coming in. It's weird, they grow kind of like this and they grow vertical and eventually they'll just go poof and then they'll like flatten out. Uh, it's definitely a more spindly kind of alocasia to a lot of my other ones. It doesn't have a lot of mass, uh, similar to the Zebrina actually, but it's a really, really nice one. If you're considering an unusual alocasia, I would consider these. Before you do that though, I would maybe Google a picture of a larger one because honestly, in my opinion, these look a little bit better when they're juvenile. I wouldn't say they look amazing otherwise. I prefer them when they're, you know, basically like this size because the older they get, I mean, they get big guys, like they get to be very tall, but I just don't love the leaves. 
you know when the plant's more mature so maybe that's something to think about if you're you know you're looking for one of these so guys that does conclude this house plant tour i will try when i edit this and i upload it i will try and link pretty much everything i've mentioned in the comments if you have any video suggestions or any questions or anything of the type please do feel free to leave a comment and i will certainly take a look at that also if you have not seen my cinematic house plant tour you might want to check that out if it's just something you're interested in i will link that below as well just so you can see kind of like an alternate version of this plant tour i guess it's basically not me talking and it's basically plant porn if you're into that then please do give it a watch let me know what you think until then guys Thank you very, very much. I will see you in the next video. Bye.